Thank you very much, Madam Chairman. Thank you. The, the title I've been given to speak of, Rowena phoned me up and said, Richard, you know, what, what do you want to talk about? What's important? And I said to her, the title should be, Britain is bankrupt and the British National Party is needed more than ever. Yeah. Now, I appreciate the invitation to speak here this afternoon because we are, we nationalists, we patriots, we Britons are at a crucial crossroads now. This country of ours is bankrupt. I'm going to dot the I's and cross the T's. I've got all the facts and figures here. I'm going to quote the Financial Times to you. I'm going to quote the Times to you. This country of ours is bankrupt. And I'm going to give you now, I'm going to give you tomorrow's headlines and the headlines the day after and the day after and the day after. The headlines are going to be massive job cuts, massive redundancies, massive bankruptcies and massive cuts in welfare. But before I get on to that, I want to address the disappointment that we all felt on the result. We all worked very, 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 very hard. Brave men and brave women put a lot of effort, spirit themselves and their hard-earned money into that election and we were all disappointed. And I'm going to say to you now, in spite of the disappointments, we are needed more than ever and we have got a tremendous future in front of us, this party. There's no question about that. And I'm going to dot the I's and cross the T's. Um, because what is threatening us is the imminent bankruptcy of this nation. Uh, I don't want uh, to get too emotional here, but I myself have lived through personal times when a £5 note was a lot of money to me. I've lived through those times. I'm not asking for your, your tears or your cries, but I know what it's like. And I think, um, I think that's what's coming. I have no doubt that, in other words, the failures of Lib, Lab and Con, they're coming home to roost for the British people. I'm going to dot the I's and cross the T's. But first of all, let me express, on behalf of all of you, the major disappointments we felt in those elections. And when I was told that we had lost all our councillors, most of our councillors standing for re-election on May the 6th, and all of our councillors in uh, Barking and Dagenham, when someone phoned me up and told me that, I had to walk around the block several times to calm down because that really, uh, that really, I know what wonderful councillors we had over there, I know the support we've got over there, I know the work that was put in over there, and I can imagine the feeling of the councillors, and I felt, I felt, I felt, I felt. It was all, from a technical point of view, from a technical point of view, it's always clear that as Gordon Brown's Labour government kept postponing the general election, postponing the evil day from their point of view before they had to face the electorate, that as it looked more and more likely that the general election would be pushed off until almost the last minute on, May, on uh, the 6th of May, the same day as the council elections, the fact is, when the turnout is about 33%, which is a standard turnout for council elections, we've got enough brave men and patriotic women on the ground who have got enough guts and spirit to go out and vote for us that we can win these council elections. But when there's all this silly hype and the general election comes along, when the turnout goes from 33% to about 60%, and Mr and Mrs Silly go out there and vote sillily, Liberal or Con, and our brave uh, voters are swamped, then that was almost, um, one could see it coming. But, and there's a huge but here, but those same, those same election results, when you stand back and calm down and have a good night's sleep, and perhaps two or three more nights sleep, we had good, solid results in those elections. And I'm going to focus now on the more difficult election for us, the general election. In that general election, we saved 72 of our candidates saved their deposits, got more than 5%. And here on the front page of this excellent newspaper of ours on sale, 60 pence over there, a souvenir edition of the general election, a souvenir edition. Here on the front page are 12 of our brave lady candidates who all saved their deposits. We put down roots in that general election. We fought half the constituencies in Britain and we got some very, very good results, including 72 saved deposits. So, listen, I, the other night, the other evening, I attended um, a London, uh, London organisers regional uh, meeting organised by Chris Roberts, in which he said, Chris Roberts said, I, Chris Roberts, the London organiser, I am bullish bullish about the future, and I think there was about 20 organisers present at this London meeting, 
Thursday evening, I think it was. If today's Saturday, that was Thursday, yeah. Today's Saturday, isn't it? So it was Thursday, yeah. It's what it's like. It's what it's like. We rush around. Um, Chris Roberts said, I, Chris Roberts, am bullish about the future. They're already making plans for the, G the GLA elections of 2012. They're just putting an organisation together. Um, um, our lady over here, Tess is the, is the secretary of the London team. We're putting a team together. Uh, they're getting, because these, these major elections take a lot of planning to get the thing, you know, all coming together. Anyway, Chris, no doubt, will give his report, and um, they've got all sorts of ideas. Um, right, I'm going to come back to our party, but I'd like now to focus on the bigger picture, this Britain that we all live in. On the day after the general election, on the Friday, when they were still counting the votes, when the election, the, the votes were still being counted, the Times newspaper brought out a headline, this is Friday morning, and the headline is, Brit Britain is in the grip of a brewing economic crisis. And the Times goes on, the perilous, perilous state of the economy and the public finances overshadows everything else. What the Times is talking about is, is the huge budget deficit the government's been running and what the Tories inherit, the huge budget deficit, the huge and vast sums of money that the British government is borrowing. And that is perilous, and perilous means frightening. The fact is, the government borrows every day on the international money markets, borrows a billion pound. The government borrows a thousand million pounds every day of the week, Monday through to Friday. We are talking here vast sums of money which our government is borrowing. Last year it totaled up to £165 billion. The government needs to borrow this money in order to, well, basically because the government spends vastly more, the government spends vastly more on welfare, defence, education, the National Health Service, the government spends vastly more than it gets back in taxes. And to put it in simple terms, in simple terms, every four pounds that the government spends, three it raises conventionally in taxes, and the fourth pound it borrows on the international money markets. The fourth pound is borrowed. And given that the British government spends approximately half the gross national product of this country, we are talking vast sums of money here, I hope I'm not too technical here. In a minute, I'm going to talk about your family and my family. In a minute. But we are nationalists, we're concerned about this nation, and economics is a very important. As Jesus Christ said, I don't often quote Jesus Christ, man lives not by bread alone, that's true, but you still need bread. And we're talking here bread to the tune of a billion pound a day. A billion pound a day. Let me focus on one more statistic, and then we'll step back and look at the bigger picture. Last year, the government borrowed £165,000 million. This was, this was a borrowing which, which added up to all the debt incurred in previous years, debt which we as British taxpayers and citizens are ultimately responsible for, and these sums of money are being borrowed at interest rates. They're certainly not being given to us. We are being lumbered. We and future generations are being lumbered with enormous burdens. But I'm just going to talk about now. And these sums of money, I repeat, are being borrowed by the government to maintain our present standard of living. They're borrowing a billion pounds.